minute or so just whilst people uh, join and then we'll start in a little bit. Oh. Good to see lots of faces. <laughs> There's a comment on the chat, uh, Tim. You're looking tired Thanks. today. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I've had a. That's because I've had a week off. <laughs> you need to get one of those filters on your camera that make you look more glamorous. You know, you can. <laughs> it's gonna need to be a really big filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black and white. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost pointed out the fact that Andy's done it himself. That it's yeah, really I don't know. Well, no, that's right. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Tim, Tim's getting a lot of comments because also um, you've got uh, this about the wallpaper as well. Yeah, well, P Peter's seen that before, so that's why. Okay. Um, so I was on a call with him last week. <laughs> Amazing. Excellent. So it would be interesting to know how many of you um, have been to one of these before. Uh, could you just uh, raise your either raise your hand or your digital hand? Uh, that would be fantastic. So some of you have brilliant. Um, and um, how many of you uh, for them? It, this is a new um, kind of experience of joining one of these. From a fresh expressions perspective, right? Okay, cool. all right, that's great. Thanks. It's just um, that'd be grand. <laughs> Obviously, Ali's very self-conscious about guzzling her lunch while uh, she must on be. She, yeah, she must be a really messy eater. <laughs> <laughs> or soup or something like yeah um oh cool crisps, crisps are so noisy <laughs> <laughs> they are amazing fantastic okay do we want to uh do we want to kick off and make a start sounds good yeah shall i pray and then lizzie do you want to do the uh, the introductions sure thing yeah, let's uh, let's just let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for uh, this technology and for our ability to be able to meet um, online. And we thank you too for lunch uh, and for food to sustain us. And we ask that as we uh, meet together today, we might be sustained uh, by you, Father. We might um, eat of the living bread of life, uh, and as a consequence. Uh, we might be more effective, we might be blessed, uh, we might see your kingdom come more in the places in which we are involved, in the communities of which we are a part, and we might see more of your love and grace exhibited in our own lives uh, and through the lives of the people that we serve. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. 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 Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It's really great to see you. Um, what we'll do, we'll just introduce ourselves quickly, and then we'll kind of get on to what we're going to do today. Um, so my name's Lizzie. I'm based in Liverpool. Um, I'm a lay pioneer um, that, that, with my husband, Dave, who's an ordained pioneer in the Church of England, we run Story House, that is a, a coffee shop, which will be opening soon, um, a charity and a fresh expression of church. And also I work for Fresh Expressions um, part-time in the, all the communications side of stuff. And then we've got Simon, our tech genius, with us today. <laughs> um, so yes, Simon, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, um, I'm, uh, I live in Barrington Edmonds. I'm uh, a Baptist uh, minister and pioneer ambassador within the Baptist uh, uh, Union. Um, and uh, I head up uh, FX Resourcing. 
So uh, yeah, awesome. good to be with you. Cool. And then Tim. Uh, yeah, Tim Lee. Uh, I work for Fresh Expressions three days a week doing the networking side of things. Um, but also um, I run my own kind of um, business, Caris Consultants, um, so contracted out to various organisations uh, and individuals and teams, um, helping them kind of be more missional um, and also do quite a bit of kind of coaching uh, and training of people to do coaching as well. So, uh, so yeah, that's me. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. We've done a few of these online conversations and they've all been really fruitful and and i just found them really encouraging and inspiring and just i think there's that aspect of pioneering where you're you're listening and it's great to listen to pioneer voices and then work out how as a movement as fresh expressions as a movement like how we can respond to this moment and also provide a platform for your voices um, as practitioners and so that's really where this session came out of um kind of having listened and gathered and collated like all the conversations we previously had it kind of we had this kind of sense that this would be a great conversation to have specifically to using like and kind of um encouraging the apostolic and prophetic nature of of pioneers um and that, that you guys all have and we really want to hear your voices um and so hopefully it'll be a really encouraging and inspiring time um the way that the session will go is that we'll um we'll use breakout rooms which seems to work really well and i'm sure if you're you're probably all really familiar with how zoom works now <laughs> we're like zoom experts um but what we'll do is we'll um address one question um then go into breakout groups to kind of discuss that and um, during that time, if there's someone in the group that would be um, up for being like a kind of scribe to jot down some of the themes and um, that people are kind of talking about. And then when we'll come back for a, a plenary where um, the group chat is so useful. And, and also, if you don't get a chance to say anything, do put it down in a group chat because we save that and we've been using the content of that to help guide um, kind of what we do next really so it's really important the stuff that you put down there and um and then we'll kind of bring out some of the themes and then we'll go back into the group um so the first question will be how are you what are you sensing the spirit is saying to the church at this moment and the second one is how can fresh expressions help you to help resource you to speak change in your community so then we'll go back into that question talk about it come back with feedback all in the group chat and then we'll pray for each other back in our breakout groups um this is this is a time for us to kind of build up the church um and kind of uh yeah it's it's an innovative time and um and hopefully there'll be a lot of inspiration um that will come from the conversation and so so basically so simon's going to put you all in a breakout group it's going to be random so uh it will be fun hopefully for you to meet some new people um also the conversation is being recorded is that right simon yeah yeah so um if you don't want to be seen you can turn your camera off if you don't like or change your name to like i don't know like bob or whatever like you can change it to something else if you don't want to be identified um but yeah we will record that because again it's really it's just such a great resource to have these conversations and it will go on our youtube channel um so the first question we're going to be looking at is what are you sensing the spirit is saying to the church at this moment? And Simon, normally he puts the question up when we go into breakout rooms in case you forget, because I I always forget what we're meant to be talking about when we go into the room. Um, so yeah, um, so we'll split, we'll split up now. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna Simon. put this into groups of about five or six. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and I'll send the, message, the, the question around in a moment. So we could, we're going until 1.35? So you've got a good 25 minutes to have a conversation about this. Yeah, and awesome. quick introduction to one another as well. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Cool. Here we go.
national departments um, responsible, amongst other things, for pioneering and fresh expressions. So uh, trying to influence some of the structural changes that we need. Hi, I'm Beth, um, an APM as well in Derby Diocese, um, a co-leader of Fresh Expression called Derwent Oak on a kind of outer urban estate. Also just starting a bit of a gardening project actually, um, very reluctantly. <laughs> um, just um, a curate who arrived last week is a bit keen on gardening, so um, uh, hosting but not leading. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been here six years, um, husband is a lay pioneer and um, three kids and a growing kind of team here so getting more involved in things like coaching and enabling as well. Hi I'm Stuart, um, <clears throat> I'm working in Warrington, uh, Birchwood, uh, it's a bigger uh, sort of housing estate, <coughs> um, mixed uh, mixed economy sort of place, um, there's a big science park, uh, part of my role is to engage with people uh, that have had no contact with Jesus yet so I'm sort of a bit of evangelist uh, trying to come up with new ways of engaging people um, and uh, spend a lot of time sort of mooching around the area meeting people um, although that's not been so easy recently obviously but uh, I've been there about a year um, before that I was a pioneer over in Salford uh, planting a church over there so that's me Hmm. Right, well we've all heard who Simon is and he's lots of quite very good questions. He's communicating through the screen to us. So, uh... yeah. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I missed Emily and Louise's introduction, did I say? So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> is someone scribing? I can scribe. Thank you. Thank you, please. So, what are we sensing the Spirit is saying to the church at the moment? <clears throat> I love that we were all smiling in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a change. I think it is quite. It feels easier to say what it what what he she they might not be. So <laughs> it's easier, isn't it? It just feels like it's easier to say what you don't agree with at the moment rather than what you agree with, which is so nice. It's nicer to be in a place that's positive. Yeah. Yeah. I think a couple of things that have um, come out of our context in, in the Church of Scotland, one is, um, well they're kind of related, keep the main thing the main thing. Um, and what what that's meant, yeah that's had some practical things, we, we had set aside a £20 million growth fund um, which Covid has evaporated and, <laughs> and it's not there and we thought we were reliant on this and realised that actually if we're saying pioneering is core or work with under 30s is core or work with vulnerable people is core it should never rely on special grants it should be absolutely core it's the main thing and we actually need to make it the main thing um, and, and other uh, and that was just listening to a, a video from Tom Balsinger who wrote um, Canoeing the Mountains and talking about the the adaptive changes that come from our deepest values and I think maybe the church is being asked to look again at what its deepest values are which is the main thing yeah so that that's a couple of things that have been have been in my mind for a few weeks now yeah I think if we were to find some words of encouragement it would be you've been able to change very rapidly very mm -hmm. significantly um, let's let's embrace that um, that that experience of change to keep on changing. I think would be an encouragement um, if we were to try and speak it positively. I think don't go back, but just yeah, you've been able to to adapt in some ways. So let's let's um, keep keep adapting. I don't I don't know about you, but my experience of time at the moment is quite strange. And I attempted a retreat online last week. I didn't really have time for it, but I needed it. And my experience of time during that week was quite strange in that sometimes two minutes was really long. Um, <clears throat> and my very, very lovely retreat guide said, that's what time does sometimes, isn't it? Um, 
and I, and I think maybe that's what you're saying Simon is that actually we did quick change re really important significant change really quickly and in our really local context we're finding that things which we've been talking about for ages of need need to happen really quickly now and it's really important that we do them really quickly and we need to be agile and we've talked about agility for so long like decades <laughs> but we really have got to do it we've got to do it we've got to do it now otherwise we're going to miss the moment um and we can yeah yeah i think the so agility adaptiveness um i think they're really i don't like resilience because it makes it sound like whatever's going on around you you don't change but I think adaptive, having the ability to adapt and keep adapting. To resilience, resilience also means don't complain if it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you need to complain sometimes if something isn't your fault and it's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I, think the, I think, yeah, the, the church is, is, so some of us would say that in some of the changes the church has made, it's not necessarily the right changes, but they have made changes and it's you know it's that experience which should put them in good stead for the changes they do need to make as we move forward yeah. i think for me it's it's um i guess um i've always struggled a bit with everything being about buildings i guess probably as pioneers we've all been in that place um and there's still been even as we sort of come to a, a late loosening of lockdown uh, a lot of excitement about getting back into the building uh, and, and i want to be positive about that because i think that's born out of people wanting to see each other be part of that community again um, but somehow to speak a prophetic word into that that we've managed without buildings for four months um, it wasn't about the buildings. It's never been about the buildings. Uh, and I know we've said this many, many times, um, but maybe as people have experienced that, um, uh, I'm hoping that that'll, that'll be something that, that we take away from this, that uh, it isn't about the buildings as such, it's about the people. And one of the things that's really spoken to me uh, as I've sort of prayed and read stuff is uh, recapturing the priesthood of all believers um that it's about all of us uh, who follow jesus to uh be those disciples where we are what we're doing who we're with all the time 24 7 um and uh and cherishing that and nurturing that whole priesthood of all believers thing that you know i think we lose when we have you know uh, being a professional minister if you like i'm paid by the urc uh, to do that stuff uh, but to, to to help people discover their gifts and their calling and the, the vision that god has on their lives uh, we've got to get back into that i think we were set up some conversations with groups of folk which for various reasons wasn't advertised anywhere and in three days were oversubscribed folk just wanting to talk but one of the one of the guys on on one of those conversations um, had a really useful analogy which again has stuck with me and he said um, someone had, had given it to him that if you stretch an elastic band and the whole thing's under tension you have to hang on to both ends but as the tension releases you instinctively let go of one end and that's kind of the whole church is under the whole world kind of all of our structures and systems is is under tension and we're trying to, to honour what our previous pre-COVID commitments were to people. And we're innovating all of this way forward. And while we're under tension, but we're having to do that. But as all the restrictions start to use, and you can get back into buildings, if you can get, you know, all of this, what end are we going to let go of instinctively? And actually, how do we make it an intentional thing, not a, not a knee-jerk reaction? Um, and I found that, are we want to let go of the past and move forward, or are we going to let go of the future advancements and, and, and jump back to where we were? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard that analogy a couple of times as well. And yeah. It's been God or church at the end, one yeah. end or the other. And yeah, do we go to where God is, or do we just, you know, we pull it so hard that we God lets us go back to the way we were as, yeah. as a church. And yeah, yeah, it's... Um, and it, it feels to me that there's a uh, that ministers are key in managing those expectations because if they don't speak out, uh, you know, I'm thinking ministers of inherited context. If they don't speak out and say, 
we're not going to go back. Uh, we're not going to just pick up everything that we had before. People are going to be expecting that. And I think they're, um, but also I, I think there are ministers. And I said, so Stuart, what Stuart's saying about the priesthood of all believers, I think that is so key. Um, that an, in this time, ministers, even and Baptist ministers have become quite like priests offering not daily mass, but daily thoughts for the day. And everything's been focused around the minister rather than saying, just go off, you know, here's your opportunity to do what we've been talking about forever. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, it has to be about releasing everybody as disciples, um, missionary disciples, rather than um, being about people who happen to be ordained or stipended or what have you. Yeah. Also, some of it's around the liberation of those who are stipended, who are um, yeah. priests, who are confined by systems which are archaic and yeah. seriously depressing. Um, <laughs> and for me, lockdown has been the best thing ever because all of a sudden, all of the hierarchy was um, in chaos. And I had an opportunity to jump online and to do things I had never imagined possible. And all I've seen is large groups of people realising their own potential and you know, speaking the word of God in the place that they live and you know, creating new communities. I mean, Leicester has been you know, pumping money in for so long into the fresh expressions and all we needed was a few months without any church buildings, apparently. And uh, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> we have the same. Um, our our high-level committees haven't met, and it's been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> People have just been doing things. <laughs> I, sh I should have said that uh, the camera follows me, so um, we're recording this, Leslie. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. as long as you're happy with that. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we would say the same. <laughs> There is something of liberation, isn't there? Yeah. I think I would just want to say that, yeah, absolutely. We've struggled quite a lot in our community. Well, we've struggled completely with getting people um, to engage online because it, 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 there's a data poverty, tech poverty thing, but it's not, it's not the major thing, actually. The major thing is that the online space is not a safe or learning space for people. It's actually a space of um, shame or potentially abuse or not safety or not a creative space so and and i and i i, I recognize that there might be a kind of refusal or a, or a discipleship or um a commitment issue in refusing potentially refusing or not being feeling wanting to come online but in our local community it has it just hasn't flown so we've done a lot of phone calls a lot of visits a lot of socially distant visits and we are beginning to gather safely because we need to do that early um and find a way of kind of we've we've sort of got the motto now careful but not fearful because we're trying to gather people because we haven't been able to do this so i found that quite tricky because i can see the huge creative potential but it just hasn't flown in a kind of this sort of environment that we our context excuse my phone that's dreadful i thought i was on silent <clears throat> It just hasn't flown in this context. So I just want to add that, that little kind of caveat into that. But I absolutely see the huge creative potential. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's worth pointing out, and often these conversations go, well, look at all this digital innovation. And I think, yes, the church may embrace the digital space in a way that it hasn't before. But to limit the creativity to churches doing stuff online, as well as what they used to do in the building, I think that just would miss so much of the opportunity in this space. And so, I, yeah, it's not that everything new is gonna be digital. I, I agree, completely agree with you, Beth, that we need to engage with it. My hope is that the people who have connected with their communities in a new way, because, you know, whether that's delivering food, whether that's, yeah. what, you know, that those people will develop a physical um, relationships with those local people. Um, as a result of this as well. Um, it's just yeah. blending, it's blending the on and offline community and understanding how that how that works. And, and it has happened, it just hasn't actually been the community that already existed. <laughs> um, yeah. I think one other thing that's emerged um, uh, has been more collaboration between churches and neighbouring congregations. Um, 
one of the concerns that a lot of our ministers have is the the advances that they've made and the people that they've reached that they never have before in a digital environment they don't want to lose that by going back into the building or or the other way but there just isn't the capacity to do both not if the minister does everything um, but one of the ways said is no but actually working as a, a cluster of you know three or four uh, uh, um, churches in the same town or in the same locality there's still a local flavour but we don't all have to produce stuff every week to go online yeah um and and just a sense of people are really done with competition between neighbouring churches it's it's like there's no room for that anymore and we really want to move into a different kind of um collaborative even sounds too clinical you know of, of shared fellowship shared ministry um shared mission um you know going forward so yeah. i hope i hope that prevails i hope that goes in in both directions though because mm -hmm. i have a sense of so if, if there's possibility of households meeting together mm -hmm. in a way that whole fellowships can't meet together that the idea of of a, a congregation meeting in smaller units um, and that's still being able to be recognized as one church you know that as well as joining up and doing stuff together there will be a sense of saying what did it look like for us to still re remain one church but to meet in half a dozen dozen different houses or you know to that this might release and i'm not sure in the sort of the way that we're being able to people have seen to want to go straight back to the buildings and all the conversation is about yeah. how we meet in the building safely but it could be we could be quite creative about meeting in households and gardens and you know releasing congregations to do things differently in that way yeah they the could church could be. lots of hours that they would just want to get back into the building in the inherited church it's the, it's mm -hmm. the building i mean we're doing zoom literally every day so they're still getting some connection but they just want to get back into the building and it's like, how do I get, how do we get them to realise that church is not just the building, it's everybody else that we've been meeting with. <clears throat> so that's the... Is there a link with the building and where the sacraments happen for, for anyone? Because I'm wondering if that's something like if communion happened in home groups or, or whatever, I wonder if... The, that you know for those for whom sacramental worship is really important i wonder if the link to the buildings in there as well possibly i mean our congregation is sort of slightly older mm. so that may have something to do with it you've also got an anglo-catholic expression there haven't you so it's, yeah there will be a, a sacramental link yeah but uh, as baptists we we're sort of less sacramental and people can celebrate um communion in home groups or what have you but there's still a desire to get back in the building mm. yeah um and uh i mean maybe for us it's a the sermon that becomes a sort of the, the replacement of the sacrament but it it's yeah still we still think we need to rely on somebody whether it's to administer the sacraments or whether it's to open the word um I, you know that ability to to feed one another and to, um, yeah, however that is is um, is limited. To the, we've we've made church so small. The box that people think is church is so small that um, yeah. If we met well, we we could meet in one another's homes, but that wouldn't be church. Well, it could be if you know. Um, See, I think my experience is is sounding quite a lot different to your experience on mass because i'm not talking about a group of people you're meeting together before i'm not talking about a church that was physically meeting these are people who've all come together around an idea and that idea came from green christian with a radical presence course great it meant that you've got people who'd got a shared vision for you know a greener earth and taking creation care really seriously um so they're scattered so there's no building to go back to um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's because the spin-off has come around an idea. Yeah. 
but uh, but we haven't got a building to go back to either so we, we meet in homes anyway so we meet rather like Simon's describing except for we are at the point of multiplication and we're too big for our homes which is a great problem but we also have um, about 75% of comorbidities for COVID anyway so we've got real risk factor problems as well but I just see that as an opportunity for more multiplication <laughs> um, but it's it's an interesting time but it's all about uh, embracing outdoor space I think uh, the weather's not quite playing ball um but yeah i think yeah there are just issues to face like all of us um and headaches about government guidelines not any as many anywhere near as many as education faces though so mm -hmm. um yeah it's just interesting times but i think you're right emily things that have bubbled up in the last few months perhaps are easier to manage at this point than things that have expectations to go back to Maybe that's part of the issue is managing expectations and a lot of our fears and anxieties about change. Yeah, and I think sort of thinking about what we're sensing God is saying to the church, and I think yeah. the, less, the lessons of fresh expressions, I think perhaps talking in the framework of Inherited Church because these are the lessons that we've learned from fresh expressions is what we want to share with them. So... Um, so yeah, I don't. I, I saw, I saw, yeah. So I saw a Facebook thread going. Well, if we're limited to thirty, how are we going to cope? And I facetiously said, but not facetiously, but surely you need to think about church planting and multiplication. Why not? Why not think about multiple congregations? Why not think about going into other buildings that are not in use? Why not think? Why not think like that? Is that really facetious of me? <laughs> um, why not think like that? Working together, like Leslie said. Why not think like that? I don't understand. Am I just really naive? <laughs> I sometimes think that for some people that, um, who was it said recently, people don't resist change, they resist loss. So there's there's yeah. a loss there. But there's another folk, who, even folks who would be willing to embrace change, they can't imagine it any other way. If for 60, 70 years, church has looked pretty much like this and the church next door has and the church that, you know, up the road all kind of have that same building centric clergy centric uh, feel to it then sometimes it takes a post like like what you've put up Beth to actually uh, for folks to even occur to them that there is another way of doing it they just can't imagine it mm. Mm. And I guess that's where where we come in. Perhaps that's uh, getting back to the original question: is is uh, we have that responsibility, that calling to show a different way, uh, to say, look, there are other options. That it doesn't all have to look like this. And yes, that might be scary, but in a lot of cases, it works, um, and we can prove mm -hmm. that, and we can show that, and say, yeah, it's a risk. Everything's a risk. Um, let's you know try and encourage people to see that uh, whilst change is scary it's also necess a necessity otherwise we die yeah, cool. yeah. which yeah. we will in 56 seconds <laughs> you don't have to head back right away but yeah hmm. have you got all of that emily <laughs> turns out i have <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. <laughs> How many points have I got to pick out for the main group? Um, I don't know. So I, I think just being asked to type in, so try and okay. make, probably make most of them, but try and make them as, <laughs> as uh, briefly as you can. I can do that. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm going to, I don't know how long we've got. Uh, 12, 30 seconds. Yeah. I'm going to head back just to make sure everything's working in the main plenary space. But <laughs> head back and do Oh, it says five seconds anyway. Or you just want to thought, do you know what? Somebody said something really wise, which I really liked. Um, just start posting it in the chat room um, now, um, please. Um, so if you could just, uh, yeah, if you could just begin to do that. Um, and Lizzie and I will kind of watch... Um, kind of um, what happens and the the feedback that people uh, give from that so yeah if you've got to... yeah we we were talking again it's something that's come out every time about listening and emma's put it up um yeah 
like listen 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 pray 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 <laughs> um yeah it, it's always there it's always important um which is yeah let's have a look <laughs> Um, can I just mention that um, on the Godsend app, if you're familiar with that, um, if you're not familiar with it, download it. <laughs> um, on the listen area of that, um, and then the called area, um, the in the stories, in underneath called, um, there's a couple of videos by Andy from Liverpool Cathedral, and he talks about the importance of praying, and he's talking about, you know, at the end of the day, whatever expertise you might bring to something is completely irrelevant, really, because unless God is at work in it um, and points you in the right place, uh, you're not going to you're not going to land on anything good. Anyway, so it's just a real, a really helpful short reminder about the prayer thing and listening thing. Mm. I'll shut up now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there was a question about the app. It's called Godsend. If you go into the App Store or Google Play and type in FX as in fresh expression space godsend uh, you'll be able to download it it's a free uh, app uh, thanks ali for recommending it mm. yeah, that's great i'm interested i i think it was emily keep the main thing the main thing sorry to be um slightly thick but what's the main thing um the idea of church trying to do lots of things and not doing um all of them well okay um, going okay this is what we're called to do let's do it and let's work out how to do it um mm. effectively and then resourcing it yeah great mm. yeah thank you there is uh, some of the stuff that i've heard talk about in the last few months was this idea of i'm um, going back to like what was that scrap of paper that you started with that said what you're about and kind of going back to that um because all the stuff you couldn't do you couldn't do it you were doing you couldn't do anymore and kind of going back to like what what is that thing that you're about um uh which yeah is really i think is really key there's so many good comments i can't read quickly uh, um there seems to be a, like a lot of people have talked about that thing of going back to opening church again and like what like you know what's the rush like like what are you getting back to um do we need to reopen the church i think that questioning um that i think pioneers are really good at of questioning what what has been quite normal and, and has continued to be that way for a long time and i think it maybe maybe it's just that what they're trying to say to the church what we're trying to say to the church as pioneers is to, to kind of question even the the kind of foundation like the very basic kind of things you were doing before to keep questioning um what, what's that about what are you doing i'm interested because um a couple of people have kind of talked about being oh actually it was the same person neil and nikki being more radical mm. and i'm just interested in terms of that um, do you want to fill in any detail around that? Um, that was Ali, Ali Middleton, really, wasn't it? Yeah. It was it Ali, Ali is, yeah, okay, sorry. Well, no, it Ali, was Nick who wrote it, but it was Ali yeah. who was saying it. Okay, yeah. okay, Ali, do you want to just comment on that? Well, I, what I was talking about was um, basically um, because we're hitting, a, going to be hitting a financial crisis, basically as a church, churches across the board. And I wondered whether uh, part of that was a jolt to us as pioneers, um, because we'll maybe be jolting out of our comfort zone and having to go even further to the edge was what I was sort of talking about. Yeah. And maybe we've got to look at ourselves first and what God's saying to us rather than put it to the wider church first was kind of what I was saying. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It was interesting, something we talked about and that Judy Morton picked up as well as going, we talked about the learning from what's gone before as well and that sometimes people see pioneering as just starting new things and maybe not 
not looking back or not kind of respecting what's gone before but we talked about you know that older members in in congregations actually have experienced gone through world wars and and there's that we can learn from them but also um what the church has done in the past to other crises and that they're actually kind of learning from the past as well and not not just focusing on the new thing um but there is some like wisdom to gain from from what's gone before um so that was something that came out as well mm. And Leslie, I'm, I'm just aware you put this comment about putting too much stock in normal and the kind of our desires for stability and predictability and our, almost our inability to be able to live in liminal spaces. That's in between, you know. Do we need to face the possibility of an extended period of post-normal where actually things are just not solid for a long time? I don't know whether you want to add any other comment to that. Are you still there, Leslie? see her there we go i was muted couldn't get myself off from you no really just to to say um that there, there is something in all of us i think that what we really want is that tomorrow is pretty much like today or not too much different that we can cope with it and that's not going to be the case i think for yeah. a long a long time and um there'll be a desire to kind of converge and, and resolve what we're seeing into the new normal and for a long time, that might be premature. Mm. Yeah. Emily's just written about um, the kind of the whole, the green Christian course called Radical Presence. And I, I, I find it fascinating that, you know, before we went into lockdown, the whole um, kind of, um, that whole thing was a really big thing. And yet actually it seems to have been lost in terms of what it is that might emerge into the future and I wonder actually whether it's a really important uh, area. Mm. I've spent more time on my allotment in the last um, three months than I have done in but I've had some amazing conversations with people about God because they're safe and in a garden and it's been really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems like it, I mean people are recognizing this. This is this is a moment where people want change. Even our cult, even people in the UK want change. There's the research that says like less than nine percent of people want life to go back to normal, and 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 surely the church should should kind of be catching on to that that desire for change um, and. Uh, and to kind of let go of what what's gone before. Um, There's an interesting. It like, go on, sorry, Lizzie. No, it just courage comes out from a lot of the stuff that people have been saying. The word kind of courage comes to mind. Um, the need to be brave. Yep. I cannot sing the praises of that course enough. It, seven weeks, yeah seven two-hour yep. sessions worth every moment we've had three different groups running in leicester and i know um green christian are running another two at the moment okay well, if you got the time yeah that's great thank you emily um is it mark asked the question about um the people in the church like the church so asking them about change is not a smart move um, the people who lead the church get their positions by being good at church, so not sure there will be wisdom there either. Um, that's kind of a quite a, it's kind of quite a stark statement. Mark, I don't know whether you want to come back on that. Thank you for the, for making that comment. I'm a I'm a church leader. I'm ordained. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm yeah. seeing that from position of knowing my my friends who are in who I, I graduated with and came through the system with, the, the ones who have done done the best in the church are r rural deans and area deans on their way to being archdeacons because they're very good at church. Mm. And the curates that I see coming through are really committed to their tradition more than they are to mission. You may have different experiences in different parts of the country. I think far too many people um, are... are we're, we're, we're only selected if we're good at it. Mm. And pioneers are still as a bolt-on 
or we've got a pioneer now, we can stop doing that. And I do, when I talk to bishops, and arch, um, I haven't talked to archbishops, but I talk to bishops <laughs> every now and again, um, and it's it's almost like they, they, don't, they, they don't get it. They don't get what it means to be, um, you know, the, the, the bishop's a supporter who stands in the, sits in the stands cheering you on, but he's not on the pitch playing. We haven't got a missional bishop in the country, have we? Have we? I'm at 150 of them. What do they do all day? I don't know. <laughs> They've never visited here. Yeah, okay. we do. I'd have to say our bishop in Gloucester is missional and, and what oh, she's good. <laughs> looking to do and what she's looking to inspire. A yeah. uh, number of conversations coming up in the next month, all based around mission and pioneering. Mm. Right. But but I do think that if you want to read Jesus the movement and go back to where, where we went, the, the traditional Anglican church is lost. It really is. Mm. And whether we can be found again, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm not convinced. Yeah, great. Andy, thanks Without for those comments. Me. And yeah. <laughs> Mark, thanks for your honesty um, about exploring some of that stuff. Mm. Okay, so um, we will capture the chat um, and we'll send it to you. Um, so you'll kind of have a, a record um, of what it is that's been said. Um, and at some stage or other, we'll kind of go through and sift some of the um, the stuff that's been uh, that's been said so we're going to move into our kind of our second conversation which is looking at um, how can fresh expressions help to resource you to speak uh, change into the conversation I just want to make sure yeah how can fresh expressions help to resource you to speak change into your specific context now we, we might not be able to and that's absolutely fine um but if you like we just as an organization we're asking you know how is it we can help you do what it is that you're trying to do in your mm -hmm. context um and what would that mean and what would that look like mm -hmm. so simon if you can um, send us back into our breakout groups that would be brilliant change into your specific context yeah i've got no idea anybody else it's working out what you need isn't it before you can get somebody to provide it you need to sort of sit and go well actually what am i get what are we doing going forward and what do i need i mean for me it's spades and forks and people to come and dig mm. But it's conversations to work that out, isn't it? Yeah. Is it is it bigger than than what what our particular projects or plans are? Though you know it may be very specific, but actually, it's it's how how can would I be right in saying how can fresh expressions help us to challenge and change where we are? for the future um and i know that might involve some of the other stuff the stuff that we're doing at the moment but actually what how can how can the future look different and how can we ask fresh expressions to help us to engage with those that we need to engage with to make that future different yeah that's about collective visioning isn't it yeah yeah i mean just to address sort of um i think in our minds, there's there's two levels. There are the fresh expressions and some of the denominational research and some of the people nationally are trying to speak into their denominations. But I think we recognize at a local level, whether it's a benefice, a deanery, a district, synod, that how can you as practitioners, how can we equip you to, you know, we've just been talking about things that might we might want to say to the wider church. How can we equip and enable you to say that um, are there res resources are there um, yeah are, are there things lists of questions um, access to research stats about you know the efficacy of um, fresh expressions what you know are, are there things that you would want us to supply you with as you perhaps speak up for fresh expressions and pioneering 
to the structures that you're part of. Could you say, uh, I mean, my remit is to, to be speaking into the national structures and, and part of why I do um, what I do, despite it being described as trying to push an elephant up a sand dune, um, <laughs> is that every time something new emerges, those who have pioneered it have faced a set of struggles. My part of the process is to make sure that whoever comes after them does not have to go through the same struggles. Mm that actually um, to, to listen and to inform and to change uh, processes or procedures that, that make it easier for people to be creative in mission and in worship and in ministry. Um, so Fresh Expressions at the moment I think is really helping us in, in a number of ways. One is there is now more than a decade of stories and, and I think actually that's extremely powerful, that it's not hypothetical, that mm. there's actual people with actual names and actual lives who have been directly affected by, by fresh expressions. And, and that's all there. So um, it, it lends a, a whole lot of credibility to those who are trying to say, look, we, we, you know, would it kill us to try something new for five minutes? Um, I think the Godsend app, um, I think for a lot of people the MSM course was prohibitively expensive um, and having that online is a gift, it's an absolute gift. Um, so the Church of Scotland are about to launch the, um, well what the church in the Church of England has been called Greenhouse, Fresh Expressions Greenhouses, we are launching it as Fresh Expressions Incubators, um, the same thing and actually having access to that material um is nothing short of a gift so i think that you know the history and the, the shared wisdom the shared stories um but on on a different level as well some of the big doctrinal theological things about ordination and the sacraments and the marks of the church and governance at, at the higher level the ability to actually talk with colleagues in other denominations um, and say, well, how have you done it? What, what actually helped um, has been really useful. That's, yeah, I, um, I know we wouldn't be where we are today without that, mm -hmm. without someone else pioneering that for us. Yeah, and, and maybe there are two different callings, but I think there's an o overlap that some of us, so uh, been thinking quite a bit recently about the trellis and the vine and what you're talking about, Leslie, is how do we, how do we adapt the trellis so that it enables the vine to grow? And the pioneers on the ground are, as it were, responding to the organic move the spirit and seeing stuff grow and bearing fruit. Um, I think some of those within the structures of a particular calling to make sure the trellis doesn't hinder that growth but enables it. And um, uh, yeah, one thing that I think would really help us <clears throat> is we have pioneers who are are, are not, who are often quite focused on their context. And actually one of the things I, I would like to challenge pioneers to do is to create advocacy themselves and to disciple future pioneers. Um, yeah. And, and, and actually, so, so that help with that. <laughs> See, when you've got that one cracked, let me know. <laughs> yeah, so I, just to step into that really, I, I've started thinking that I think there might be an in-between thing as well. I think there's a there's something about being strategically organic as well that yeah. that I think having uh, being organic as a value is really important but sometimes you need to be strategically like that to make 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 it clear that you're being intentionally organic and mm. um, that that's a choice that you're making but you need to be mm. quite strategic about it because there's a heck of a lot in our culture which is very very actively inorganic yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so in order to be very actively and strategically organic it's a choice you have to make but also as I, as I go on, I feel like I'm stepping into lots and lots of coaching type roles True. and lots of roles of responsibility where I perhaps, um, that's becoming the majority of my role almost, but um, it's not something that I, it's something that I've had some training in and that kind of thing, but I feel like it's almost a role that doesn't exist. So I don't know whether that's something that, that for, I don't know if it's what Fresh Expressions is for, but I wonder if there's a way in which, and I don't even know if this is what Fresh Expressions is rightly placed for, but I wonder if there's a place for some kind of network or connection. And it's not quite the same thing as a network of 
of FX enablers, which is a kind of almost a dialogue. And this is a talk, talking from an English Anglican perspective. It's kind of maybe it's not a play. It's a particular conversation, but there's loads of us around who are doing this. And I really value it. We can we we just find a place where we talk to each other, not in a kind of um, formal way, but just in a way of, of uh, just encouraging each other in, in that role, really. That would be really helpful to me because I really, really value what Leslie is saying. I'm finding myself doing that and then thinking, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm suddenly doing this. I'm yeah. trimming the line and I'm building a bit of trellis. What am I doing? Um, um, sometimes, and I just would value that. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, I just in in terms of FX, it's there to serve the movement, and if that's what's needed, then FX um, will seek to provide the resources to do that um uh, and i think that's i think that I, I, and i hear what you're saying leslie as well about the individual pioneers i think there is there is an isolationist tendency amongst pioneers and if they can build team and then at the same time as building team release capacity within themselves to do the sort of advocating that you're talking about the coaching and the, mm -hmm. the, the you know, um, yeah starting yeah. new things it's relational, you know, so it's relational not just within the project you're working with, but within everyone who you want to understand what that yeah. that initiative is. Yeah. Um, so that every time you go into, well, for us it's presbytery, but, you know, at, at deanery or diocesan level, you've already got advocates in the room before anybody proposes anything. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say, it, it, I'm really, I'm really grateful. We would, Church of Scotland would not be where it is if it wasn't for for fresh expressions and the kind of generosity and the graciousness that that everyone involved has had in terms of sharing wisdom and time and resources. Um, so while I just kind of wanted to say that because it's easy to come and answer a question like that with a shopping list <laughs> of what what we want next, but actually it has given a lot already, and. Just wanted to say thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And when we talk about fresh expressions as well, this is part of um, it's it's being able. So in my mind, we call FX resourcing resourcing not rather than resources, because we don't want to say this is the central stuff, we've got what you need. It's much more about how can we create an infrastructure that someone locally, you know, practitioner says, oh, I found, I, I put this together and it seemed to really connect with the churches and, you know, being able to, people being able to um, share that across the movement, you know, providing an infrastructure that enables um, people to share stuff that resources one another in a variety of ways, but in, in advocating as well. And we don't want to be sort of a, essential and in the in the past we've had been that sort of organization that says here's all the books with our branding on it actually now we're moving towards a place where we want to be a place for the experts with the practitioners to be able to share what they've got with everybody else so That was interesting what you said about Emily in terms of Leicester trying to put money into something and then almost like when the, everything wasn't there, it's when it grew. I'm sure it's really annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was interesting that advocating, not branding, really interesting. Yeah. Um, sh shameless plug for me. Uh, I don't know if any of you read Steve Asorp's book a few years ago, um, The Invisible Church Research. Um, he's got a new book coming out in August, which is rewilding the church and actually it takes a lot of the principles from that, you know, if we would just get out of our own way and let nature take its course, then then we may start to see some, uh, so it should be out in August, I think, but uh, we may start to see some changes. And I think a lot of what's happened now is that the bureaucracy has just got out of the way um, and the buildings have got out of the way and things have happened.
Mm. And a vacuum was created, wasn't it? And that's that's what I saw as like the huge opportunity was there was a giant gap and it was a case of somebody do something. <laughs> and how how you resource that long term, I don't know. I don't know enough about FX to know whether I'm about to ask for something that you already do. But how do you showcase individual um, you know, pioneers or pioneering projects? Yeah, so we've just, so Lizzie, who uh, along with Tim is facilitating this as she's been in the role. Well, let's say um, we're a team of three and we've not met in person yet. <laughs> so Lizzie started since lockdown, um, but there's, a, there's a, a part of her plan is to sort of take the communications uh, and telling stories is, a, is, a, is at the heart of that. Um, and yeah, and so having a few stories, the last um, incarnation of the website got quite story heavy and some of them were out of date and it was quite hard to navigate. We want to offer some um, key example stories on the website um, that sort of um, show the diversity of the different approaches um, but also then to be telling stories elsewhere. There is a there is a stories app um, that never really mm -hmm. um, got the traction. Um, and you know, it, again, it's a critical mass. So if you look under f fresh expressions, spell it out rather than use FX. I think the fresh expressions stories in the app store. There's a, a an app with where people were submitting stories um, uh, and. Uh, yeah, um, so that is something we've done in the past. It's something that's sort of part of what we want to do moving forward. Um, yeah. I think I've sat in loads of classrooms and I've done a million courses, but I learn more from someone mm -hmm. here, what they're doing. Yeah. I think one of the things about the, the stories, I, I do think that is something that is better when someone's facilitating it. We've tried so many times in so many different ways to, to encourage people to share stories and they won't. But if someone goes along and says, let me take down the details of your stories in a couple of pictures and I'll post it, you know, yeah. which is which is where a lot of the stories came from on the old app, on the old website. Yeah. But actually people, you know, it, it, we get it all the time. Why didn't we all know about this? And you're like, well, nobody was stopping you from telling people. <laughs> Yeah. But it, it, there's something, it's just making time to do that, so facilitating that yeah. does produce more. There is also, and I would say there's, there's a balance because a, a lot of pioneers are quite protective of those that they're ministering amongst and mm -hmm. um, not wanting to, to tell other no. stories that they don't own uh, or, to, or to, mm -hmm. in telling somebody else's story, there's a sort of a power um, situation going on there which they don't want to step into and so that's part of the challenge um, and sometimes particularly when we're telling stories to the wider church there's a sort of a framing of it in a terms of and these people became Christians and you know and this is uh, uh, these are the numbers because that's how you you know you tend to judge that something's worthwhile and it it's there's a real Telling stories and the way you tell stories and who tells stories is really um, a, a difficult thing to navigate, really. Yeah. It's also it's about the story you tell as well. You don't have to tell the story of the fresh expression. You can tell the story of the journey of the pioneer. Because often that's the thing that I would be interested in. I think, how, how the hell did you end up there? Yeah. You know, and and so that, that kind of the leaps they make, you realise there are connections. It's that networking thing, isn't it? Of, yeah, one of the things we're keen to do, uh, and it's on the it's on the wish list, but it's hopefully not too many months away, is to start uh, a podcast, which will do exactly that. Just um, not for, again for us to sort of um, centrally say this is how you do a fresh, but to invite people to contribute to that. that just, hearing stories, just hearing stories from the. Um, uh, from yes, we have just started just being part of our mission ministry team and I'm discovering some really basic misconceptions which is slightly interesting <laughs> so we think we might just do a diocesan thing just like pioneers of people who dot 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 and just start to just tell stories with that phrase at the beginning because we just realized that there's just some basic yeah basic. you have to just keep telling people for years don't you like on a cycle <laughs> it's like I told you this five years ago and you really 
don't know what fresh question. We've we've just we've just started a podcast in the Baptist Church. Um, it's called Mission or Adventure, and I think sometimes it. You almost have to hear a conversation over half an hour in order to be immersed in the thinking of that person because you you see something written down or you hear a couple of phrases and you interpret it with the lens that you're coming with, not the lens that the person is speaking from. So you hear, I don't know, um, we you know it turned into church or you know a, a church emerged and already people are loading in what they understand as church and you know. And sometimes you need to be able to tease things out and uh, ask those questions. So, um, but yeah, but whether whether people who aren't, whether people will take the time to listen to those sorts of stories and, and get immerse themselves in it, we can never. Right, just... Yeah, one of the things is what people have permission to put down as well, because um, we, we spend quite a lot of time encouraging people to do stuff yeah. or to try things. Um, again, we, some of the conversations we've had over the last months, um, there, there was an, exactly what you're saying about the way things are framed and what people infer from it. Um, there was a, a statement went out in a report which says we need a new generation of ministers who can do, uh, who can do things in a more pioneering, innovative, creative way, to which a whole swathe of ministers got back and went, we're already here, but you won't let us do it. Um, we've had the pioneering ground out of us because we still have to chair all the meetings and we still have to fill in all the forms and we still have to, you know, and and all of this stuff that's kind of enshrined in, in either church law or tradition that actually you won't let us put down. So we come in, you know, we, we you know, we're inducted into a, a new congregation, we come full of hope and creativity and ideas and vision. And then life just takes over and um, you want all the new stuff, but you still want everything else. Um, so I think there's a big re-education, not just of, um, of ministers, but also of congregational expectations of ministry and of their selves. And of the structures. And of the structures. You know, actually, could you not do that yourself? Why do you need a minister to do it? You know, if you're meeting in small groups, if you're, you know, if you were meeting in small groups, you wouldn't expect the minister to turn up and lead every one of them. Mm. Or would you? <laughs> yeah. I and mean, when you start from scratch, you can build it so that you're not needed. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but that's not how it works. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. But it's great that people came back to you and didn't just grumble to themselves. I mean, that's a, that sounds like a beginning of a, a fruitful yeah. conversation. As well, it was, and, and that was the thing. We invited people to come and have a conversation, and they did. And, and for all they were saying that, they were full of optimism and positivity. You know, it, it, it really wasn't a, a kind of complaining session, but they were saying, you've already got a generation of ministers, not all of them, but certainly we're already there, we're in post, we're out there, we're on the ground, ready to go. Just stop holding us back. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that's our next big, <laughs> next, <laughs> next challenge is, yeah, change centuries long expectation of ministry. Uh -oh. I'll keep us going till the schools go back. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a practical question now. If um, Mission Shape Ministry was too expensive, is it much cheaper it being online? Um, it's the Godsend apps free. Yeah. Oh, right, I see what you mean. And that's that's all the content, really, or the distilled and updated and reviewed. Yeah. Um, Mission Shape Ministry is still available, and yeah. there is an online version of the course mm -hmm. starting in September, and it works out. It works out less than a hundred pounds if there's a group of five. Um, mm -hmm. So it's yeah. So. 
I want yeah. to look at Leicester, but I have to yeah. get permission. I think previously it was more, you know, when you were not, it wasn't designed originally for small groups and when you were looking for that kind of critical mass of, of, yeah. of larger groups, it was more expensive because of and going yeah. away overnight and things like that. So, yeah, I loved it when I did it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, more uh, three and a half thousand, four thousand people have done it over the years. It's, I think it's been a significant contribution. Whether it's, yeah, whether it's the way people learn these days, I we've advertised the MSM online course for September, and we've not had much takers, and maybe we've done ourselves out of business <laughs> by, by pr God promoting the godsend app. Um, but um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, it's yeah, there's some good materials there. Mm. And it's possible um, the the FX resourcing website um, the same price. So the, part of the course fee for um, MSM is uh, thirty six pound sort of registration fee, which comes to FX. Whoever's running the course, it, that thirty six pound per person goes to FX. Um, but you can go on to FX resourcing, pay that same thirty six pound, and access all of the all of the uh, participant materials online. Uh, there, that's possible. Uh, to do now so if there was a group of people that and maybe we need to be promoting that if there was a were a group groups of people that just wanted to take it deeper because msm is you know there's a, only so much you can get in an app that is one way of, of doing it getting a group to register just pay their 36 pound and then use the materials themselves good to know he says now that, even, I <laughs> again doing himself out of a uh, uh, yeah Oh, one thing you, yeah, that's quite cheap, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I need to do is just promote individuals to do, to do that. Um, and you, you don't have to promote it to many of us before everybody will want it. Yeah. yeah. Some of us can't keep quiet, can we guess? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. if, if one, if one person acted as facilitator, the enabler account, which is sort of a hundred pounds to download the teaching materials, plus a group around, yeah, I mean that there are ways. I'll have to think about that. That's mm. yeah, right. I just need to give people a two. Because having said what I said, that the app thing doesn't always work in every community, and you know that I had certain problems with that app, <laughs> with that conversation. <laughs> yeah, just the way my mind worked. There we go. Thirty-six pounds. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, but it, but the app is available. The contents of the app are available yeah. on the are available platform. online yeah no yeah yeah that's great yeah. yeah it's just with ever shrinking budgets yeah yeah we're gonna have to be uh yeah clever so about what we buy aren't we and investing in pioneering is definitely the right thing to do it's interesting we had um so the edinburgh Dias uh, edinburgh presbytery um for three years funded the msm course in the first year they paid it completely second year they capped it and, and paid it completely for some folk but they've uh, Glasgow which is three times bigger has no fresh expressions Edinburgh had 11 so actually the investment in the training uh, paid off yeah it's so maybe not enough evidence but it's too much to be coincidence I think yeah Leslie if you'd put that in an email to us that might be something we can we can use to <laughs> yeah um that, yeah. that, that, that very fact that MS, uh, you know that there was investment in in training uh, that's in what they used their mission mission budget for for three years yeah yeah if church if, if diocese etc wanting to start fresh expressions yeah that's evidence of one way to do it yeah right no no we got oh, okay you want to go? Um, yeah, what we did, we, we were plenarying, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just lost track. We just had, we just had such a great um, conversation. It was brilliant. Um, so yeah, as previously before, like we, like we really want to hear from you guys, what is it Fresh Expressions can do um, to kind of help you as pioneers and and kind of provide a platform for your voice and we, we had some great chats in in our group um yeah about providing lamenting spaces talking about other ways of 
funding and financing and um, uh, rethinking provision for pioneering and stuff like that. But yeah, do you kind of start writing stuff out because this whatever's written down would be so useful because this you know we're a movement of people it's not just led by two people at the front like you guys can shape what fresh expressions is like and and, and what we do um and and help guide us and and i know i've only started working for them so it'd be really helpful to get some indications of what we can do um but yeah we've got some stuff so yeah jot it down whatever you've been talking about um that'd be awesome let's have a look Yeah, the, the language of the institute we were talking about someone that could be like kind of educate us on how to speak into the institute, whether there's someone kind of bridge that gap to, to help us know how to, to communicate and understand the institution a bit better. Keep working on with the hurting. We, that Tim kind of said, we talked about whether part of fresh expressions it could be offering that lament space so that because with lament it's like a journey and then it leads to healing and it leads to joy but you need that space to listen first to kind of move through and sometimes people have found that potentially in the context they've been in no one's been there to listen and we want to be a positive voice in the church but you need someone to hear that pain first and whether fresh expressions could, could in, inhabit that role got a lot of love for msm and godsend simon uh <laughs> keep promoting them this is what i tell you that was my group and that was me <laughs> <laughs> you're just plugging away well did you hear about this course that we do <laughs> um we don't talk about me. it wasn't just you okay fair enough he doesn't get commissioned by the way you can like it's <laughs> keep talking about successes and failures that's a really interesting point to talk about the failures as well as the successes uh so uh tim a really interesting can, can fx continue to be a place to share stories oh um i've just lost where it's gone um alternative funding that was uh, one of the things that we talked about in our group um the model has been um you train and equip a pioneer and they then go and work full-time or part-time paid for by the church mm. um whereas actually nowadays we are beginning to actively pursue how you do whether you call it tent building bivocational all that kind of stuff um they are some of the conversations which we're beginning to explore with people so thank yeah. you to tim for that kind of conversation and if you like lizzie simon and i are all we all do that in slightly different ways um um, and I'm always ending up having conversations with people around what are your transferable skills, um, yeah. which is, is, is the start of that conversation. Yeah. Can we help churches work together? Um, that's a, yeah, that's a really interesting one. Uh, we can't force that to happen. We would very much encourage and say that that is, um, it, it's better together than it is apart. that's a really interesting question by tim about how can we create toolkits for agitating and lobbying at grassroots level which is a really interesting kind of language to begin to develop um it's kind of a um yeah a different sort sort of language mm. uh, than we've perhaps used before Yeah, Lou, Lou's comment, and we, we were talking about the frequency since lockdown of um, kind of online pioneer gatherings, and that, that, that it is always good to have that space to remind you that you're not kind of alone, you're not crazy, um, and to kind of think and talk. I think there's a way pioneers talk, and when they're together, that, that energizes, um, and and kind of yeah, that's been a good thing, and, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Um, and the frequency has been more, and I think that's been helpful. You've got Neil and Nikki, please keep these online communities going. Um, 
it is great doing it online means it's so much easier to go to and you don't have to travel which yeah is quite helpful although obviously meeting in person is still quite great can I just point out Catherine's um, post about yes. the, the narrative? I think yep. the narrative of experimentation rather than success or failure. Uh, okay. I don't know if that's the language that Catherine, but I think experimentation where trying whether it ends in success or failure is, is encouraged no matter what. Mm. Can I just add to that? Is that? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I just, um, I feel really strongly that I think that what I see in the Church of England is. Um, the way the structure is, is, is just creating people to have roles which they are judged as being either success or failure in. So we end up having pastors and people who are trying to micromanage and end up disempowering people and Christians. And I feel really strongly about that. And I think that any other, any organisation that we set up, whether it be Fresh Expression or anything that I set up, I absolutely do not want to fall into that trap of creating a structure which ends up disempowering people. And I think if we start talking about success and failure, then we start being judged on that. And we end up doing, being, becoming a similar organization to the one we're trying to leave. I'm not suggesting that we're at that because I'm, I'm only on the edge of fresh expressions. I just think it's really important. Mm. Um, and I, I've been really struck by one particular book. I've only read one book in lockdown and it's called Reinventing Organizations. Mm. And I think that if that, if we use that as our absolute baseline and keep going back to that, I think it's a Jesus social model of how we can be in community. And I think we have to keep going back and keep saying, honestly, is this what we're doing? Or are we beginning to bring in our own egos, bring in our own, uh, I mean, some of us have paid roles, you know, and all of that. And that actually can create a real problem. And it's not the kingdom of God way. I think we have to keep saying, is this the way of the kingdom of God? And if we start talking about successes and failures, I don't think it is. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, Catherine. So, Catherine, you mentioned a book, Reinventing Organisations. Is that the one by, is it Lal Lalu? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll put this up there so that people have got it, but... Um, I would just want to encourage you and say that um, there are other bookshops available. <laughs> can I say? Can I say? If you get, if you get, if you want to be interested, get the illustrated version. It's absolutely a Ooh, joy to read. Pictures the version. Yeah. <laughs> almost, read it without reading words. And I've got a copy in Sheffield, and I'm lending it out on a week loan because it's that good. I want to get it out to people as quick as possible. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Great. Okay. So, if you've, uh, are there any kind of final comments um, that people want to make? Got uh, Ali. Ali's got her hand up. Thank you, Ali. Uh, just to further amplify Catherine's thing about reinventing organisations, um, the strength of the book really is that he tells story after story after story of how you can operate differently and although it's not a christian book it's an incredibly incredible resonance with the kingdom of heaven and um, it's very hopeful because these are stories that are true that have happened in multinational companies but also right down to a tiny little not-for-profit charitable thing um, so it's quite it's quite a thick book but don't be put off by that but the the principles behind it are very similar to the principles of contextual mission and there's a lot about self-organizing in there and um, rather than having to ask permission all the time yep. about organizing within a team and then trying it and having this experimental approach, just try it. Someone has a good idea. Someone else says, oh, yeah, it sounds good. OK, two people think it's good. Let's try it. And don't hold too tightly to whether it succeeds or fails. or what. That's not the important thing. You just go with it and, you know. Um, find out what sticks and what works um, yes but yeah I found it very inspiring as well it's not it's in what interests me about it is that it was coming from the business world but the way I was introduced to it was through contemplative fire which is very it's one of the least business-like um, fresh expressions of church I mean it's all about contemplation and spirituality uh, so 
and people of real sort of depth and wisdom that were recommending it. So in Contemplative Fire, we've tried to adopt a certain amount of the stuff that's suggested in reinventing organisations, but we've only got so far. Um, so we'll see where that one goes. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ali, for sharing that. Okay, um, our time is nearly up. Um, so thank you. Um, it's great to see so many of you. We have changed the day. Um, it was, I think we've traditionally done them on a Wednesday. We did it on a Monday. Um, so we might uh, just revisit that in terms of um, what's going on and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's been, uh, that's great. If you've got any kind of feedback on, uh, I always worry about asking what day of the week you want to do something on, because I can guarantee you there'll be eight suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so yeah so thank you um would somebody like to just pray before we kind of bring our time together to a close janet you're sitting next to me on the screen i can see janet would you pray for us <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you can't say nay now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. could you unmute yourself Brilliant. <laughs> okay, Thank let's you. God of inspiration, God of Zoom, God of reality, God of creativity. We thank you for today's conversation. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, which continues to speak and um, move amongst us and throughout the world with its quiet contemplative fire. We ask that you will inspire us to go forward and out um, into further conversations, to take what we have heard and learned today and use it to bring your kingdom into this, your world. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Janet. Uh, we'll be hanging around for the next um, probably 15, 20 minutes. So if you want to carry on a conversation, that'll be great. But if you've got a go, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's been great to see you. And uh, yeah, take care and uh, look after yourselves. And if you've got a break over the next few weeks, enjoy it. Keep safe. Thank you. Cheers, thanks, Tim. <laughs>